I am going to talk to you about books. Because books are great. And I can't talk to you about books wearing glasses because you won't take me seriously. So I know a lot of you like books. A lot of you... Some of you read the Twilight series. Some of you read Hunger Games. Some of you read the Inheritance series. I want to talk about a book that I like. I started reading it in probably the beginning of high school. The whole series is 14 books. Currently 14 books. It was supposed to be 12, but the author just wrote more. And I just want to talk about it a little bit. So, my favorite book in the world is Eye of the World. Because it's fucking awesome. Like, if you like Lord of the Rings, you should like this book. If you like Aragon, you definitely should like this book. Some asshole thought it was too dry of language, but I'm like, whatever. I mean, Lord of the Rings is probably the most dryish British vagina shit I've ever even tried to read. I tried to read it. Got to, like, chapter 5 when they met the Green Man. And it's like, oh my god, so, you know, it took you 14 years to fucking get on the road? Really? <clears throat> 63 pages in is when it actually gets good. Definitely. So, we'll, we'll just start out more about it. So, this book, it takes place in the before there was cars. So, everyone used horses to get around, horse carriages... The author is extremely detailed, and I guess people don't like details and the whole imaginative creation of what their mind can think of. Heaven forbid, we can't think for ourselves. You know, less detail, I'll just imagine it myself. Whatever. He used a lot of detail, and I mean, he does a lot of resources, uh, research on like the different kind of places that he could come up with his mind, or whatever. I mean, yeah, he pulls it from a lot of the actual world. Um, a lot of traditions that he used, a lot of people that he relates everything on, the cultures, he pulls throughout the world. So, there's definitely a parallel between, you know, our world and this world. Which is another, you know, it's a delicious mind fuck when you realize, Oh my god! That's in the book! That's where he got it from! <gasps> To me it is. Whatever. You okay. guys. So, it starts in that, you know, olden time, horse carriages, horses, where people lived in these, you know, little houses, and they had, you know, bread and cheese and sausage for their daily meat. Most people were farmers and whatever. Um, there is magic in it, and magic is the greatest thing in the world. Um, there is these women who are called Aes Sedai's, um, there's a whole glossary in the back of the book. So the guy uses his own, you know, vocabulary. And then if you don't know what you're, you know, reading about, you can go to the back of the book and read the whole fucking glossary. So it's excellent. He's very creative. Um, so Aes Sedai's are women, basically female sorceress. And they hold this power of Sidin. Oh, Sadar. Oops. Sadar. They hold the power of Sadar. And Sadar is what gives them their magic. So, I mean, if you possess this unique talent, you have magical abilities. And when they describe how they do magic, it's actually like weaving a pattern. So I guess you hold on to this golden thread and you weave this beautiful pattern and then you attack with whatever pattern you created for fire, water, ice, whatever your attack is. Um, so the women are Sadar. There was, there used to be male sorcerers, um, but there haven't been a male sorcerers for like ages because, now here is the plot, um, I think it was like a thousand years ago, a couple thousand years ago, there was the Dark One, and they had to imprison the Dark One for, you know, such and such years and live happily ever after. So they imprisoned the Dark One, you know, kind of like Lord of the Rings, where there was a dark human being and they had to defeat it. So he's in prison. They use seals. But while imprisonating him, the male half of the magic power set in actually became tainted. 
So whenever a male Aes Sedai would, you know, draw this magic, use this magic, he would get that whole sickly taint within him, and then he becomes mentally insane, he destroys a bunch of the world, he burns himself out, he basically is a dangerous hazard. So, because you can't have male sorcerers, otherwise they're going to kill everybody, you have to get, you know, Aes Sedai's or go on this, you know, mission, capture him, imprison him, and then they so-called, you know, gentle him. And the meaning of gentle is basically take his magical ability away from him. When you take magic away from somebody, they kind of want to kill themselves because it sucks to, you know, live in a world of magicalness and then not be able to have magic. Basically, that's what it is. So, that's what happens to male sorcerers. At this age, there's uh, three young boys in a town that's very excluded away from the rest of the kingdom. This is the map he uses. I probably could have gone online and, you know, just post up a picture. But there's a little map in it. This is the other half of the world. This is the blight where if you go any further than up here, you're basically ending up in a very sickly desert that everything's going to either kill you or you're just going to die. If you go that way, if you go, if you go this way, you end up um, the spine of the world where there's mountains, and when you cross the mountains, you're in this the Isle waste, whatever. Anyway, so we're very ex excluded in this small area where this little town is surrounded by mountains everywhere. There's fucking mountains, and you know, very few visitors. The queen even barely even realized that she has that little village. I mean, yeah, that's where the best tobacco comes from, apparently. But, you know, not a lot of people know about it. It's, it's, a, it's a secret place. A secret, tiny place. So, this Izetta named Moraine is on a journey. She goes to this village. Uh, she meets three young strapping men that are like, you know, 16. 16 young boys. Um, one of them, his name is Rand, which when you first start the book, you actually end up being Rand. In fact, when you first start the book, you have that, you know, third oscillant view, but within Rand. So Rand is the one that you kind of read about it. Rand is the one that you kind of read his thoughts about, you know, everything. So it actually takes place as Rand being the main character. And so there's Rand, there's his best friend, Perrin, and then I guess Matt's his best friend, too. They're both his best friends. They're both his really close friends. He also got this girl who he has a thing for. I mean, if you grow up in a village, clearly you have your eye on someone, and her name's Egwin. And then there's a really haughty, haughty older female named Nanev. Nanev. Um, she's your in charge woman's circle. I'm, I'm basically just telling you all the main characters right now. So, Moraine's the Aes Sedai, her warden. Um, Aes Sedai have wardens, which basically are either bodyguards that they have a special bond with, and they can, you know, feel, touch, you know, whatever they're, you know, feeling. Um, so that's the way if the Aes Sedai gets in trouble or she feels in trouble, the warden can come and help her. Basically, she comes to their wonderful village. They're having this fancy winter night. Um, it's a festival, fancy winter night festival. Don't want to give away too much. Anyway, she comes to the festival, and there's, they're having a party. They're enjoying themselves. And Rand, he goes home, because, you know, his house is a mile away from the actual town. He goes home, and him and his dad get basically attacked by these things called Trollocs. Trollocs are like half beast, half animal, half human with, you know, black male, and they basically destroy everything. Um, they're uncommon, because... They don't actually exist to them because when people think, oh, Trollocs, it's just a fairy tale. It's like the boogeyman coming out of the closet and actually eating people. I mean, no one would believe it. So Trollocs attack him and his father. He goes back to the village. You know, the whole village is being fucking attacked by these Trollocs. And Moraine is the Aes Sedai, and she goes up to the three boys, you know, Matt, Rand, and Perrin. She's like, you three boys have to come with me on this grand, wonderful journey because you have a greater destiny than sitting here in a village and growing up to be farmers. So that's really what it is. It's a destiny. It's a, it's a quest. 
She comes in, she takes them away, and from there, you'll just have to read 14 books. So this one's this one's really good. It tells you the whole plot line. I don't want to give away the whole plot line. You should just... If you're looking for a fucking good book, read this fucking book. So, I mean, just just read the first book. The, the first book's really good. The second book's really good. The third book's really good. Fourth book, fifth book, sixth book, seventh book. In fact, I have the seventh book. Seventh book is really good, and I like the way the, the illustrator did all these cool graphics and everything. So, the seventh book is really fucking good. Um, it's a whole fucking series, so if you want to know the whole... Everything. It's 14 fucking books. And they're not really thin books. They're pretty thick. I mean, here's a hardcover. It's a fucking big book. So, this is actually book um, 13, but... They're all pretty much this big. It's a great book. The author is Robert Jordan. He, I think it was around book 12. Book 11. Book 11, um, well, book 11's when the author passed away. So Robert Jordan, you know, September 16, 2007, he passed away with leukemia. This author dedicated almost 20 years of his life to write this fantastic fucking book. He passed away of leukemia in 2007, and it was taken over by Brandon Saunders. And if anyone likes Brandon Saunders' work, you're definitely going to write the, you know, you're going to love the last three books. I mean, he does have a similar um, writing style. What I don't like about Brandon Saunders is that he skimps on the details. I mean, some people don't like details. I like when your detail about how a person feels and how they react in a situation, like the action, like the stuff that I want to, you know, know. Otherwise, I don't care about, you know, the detail about this boat and that boat and this harbor, you know. What it was like that morning, while well, Robert Jordan will take, you know, three pages to write what it was that particular morning, you know, how the clouds settled, how this bird flew, and how that. So, um, those are the two different writing styles. So, Robert Jordan does put a lot of effort in his detail, but he really gets you in the mood, and you know if you don't really like that particular that much detail, just skim fucking over it. Just skim it to where it gets back to, like, oh, you know, Matt did this. Um, I also have to tell you, my favorite character is Matt Trim. He's fucking awesome. He's gorgeous as hell. I don't really know. He's, <laughs> I don't know, like, when you read the book, he kind of ends up being, like, this flirtatious, I'm a farm boy, but I can have all the girls in the world right now. So, I mean, it happens. He's like a new celebrity. It's cute. But as, you know, his character develops, he becomes more of a man. He becomes, you know, willing to make sacrifices. And he is loyal to a woman when he has one. Um, so, put my glasses back on.